I'm Danny Dakota, one of the volunteer worship associates. As we move into a quieter space for prayer together, take a moment to notice how you feel. Maybe stretch, maybe put your feet firmly on the floor. Take a deep breath in and out to settle together into prayer. God without gender, God of many names, again and again, we come back to your well. How easily the water runs through our hands and how often we return with our cracked palms. Words and hearts falter in this time of pandemic. We say to each other, I miss you. Did you get the results of the test? I love you. Are you feeling better today? Are you safe? We say to whatever we find holy, where are you? In the inhale of our breath and in the spaces between our words, a sacred presence moves. And inexplicably, our hands are full again. Help us to see the cupped hands of another and know that their longing is the same as our own. Make our hands and hearts ready to protect the defenseless and those pushed to the margins of society, from transgendered children whom the state seeks to erase, to people of color whose lives and whose ancestors' lives have been shaped by the rules of white supremacy. Spirit, give us the courage and the humility to refuse to be bystanders. Send hope as a guide before each of us and give us the discipline and faith to follow through the dark spaces of loss and suffering, spaces you know as well as those of joy and lightness. Eternal Spirit, reveal this day something of what endures and what is good gifts that we can carry lightly. Please join me in two minutes of silent reflection. May it be so. Happy Easter. Today we celebrate a hope reborn, an active, living, moving hope. 
an embodied and hard-won optimism, a fleshy, risky, sometimes tentative, but still very real hope. After a dormant winter, after a hard and frozen year, we are now seeing life emerging out of the muddy March ground. We turn to April and shoots of green, little seeds giving way to crocus buds that are peeking up through the earth. Parker Palmer writes of this gooey, icky muck and how sometimes when we get stuck in it, it can be hard to believe that the mud will yield blossoms and abundance. He says, before spring becomes beautiful, it is ugly. It is nothing but mud and muck. I've walked through early spring fields, he says, and in some of those fields, it will suck the boots off your feet. A world so wet and woeful, you yearn for the return of snow and ice. Of course, there's a miracle inside that muddy mess. Those fields are a seed bed for rebirth. Spring begins tentatively, but advances with a tenacity that never fails to touch me. After the mud, hope grows at a geometric rate. The days get longer, the winds are, get warmer, the world grows green again. I know several of you just finished a study series on Howard Thurman. And Howard Thurman says that one of the oldest definitions of hope is an inlet. An inlet connects the lagoon to the ocean. It is that opening that gives the ocean free and easy access to the lagoon. It is that opening that gives the lagoon free and easy access to the sea. Hope is an inlet, a pathway to greater possibilities, to expansive life, to an open sea. When hope is made real, it can move through our lives, bringing new seasons, new possibilities, new unimagined realities. The earth in this season invites us to regeneration. How might we hear her call? Andy, can we spotlight Matt again? Just as the natural rhythms of the inlets of spring invite us into a transformation moment, so does, too, the Christian calendar. The Christian story moves us through destruction and death to the promise of life and miraculous possibility. The brutality of Good Friday yields to the joy of Easter morning. One cannot exist without the other. The hope only arrives after we sit in the discomfort of despair. Jesus came back to Jerusalem. He arrived knowing that his message of love 
was a threat to those in power. Holy Week recounts the events of those final days. Late Thursday night, after a meal, he goes to the garden, and there he is betrayed and then condemned by the Romans. He dies on the cross at 3 p.m. on Friday afternoon. His followers cry out, lamenting as they lose their leader. Jesus's body is placed in a tomb. Three days pass, and on that third day, Mary Magdalene and other women set out to the burial site. They are going to grieve. They are going to finish the rituals of death of the time. They come bringing oils to anoint the body, cloths to wrap it. They are going to honor. Finding that the tomb is empty is confounding. On the one hand, it is a moment of hope. Life is bigger than death. But on the other hand, the women are afraid. What does this message mean? How does one make sense of a hope that is unsettling? One that threatens what we previously knew? Our Lectio Divina group wrestled with this text just on Thursday. The Gospel of Mark tells the reader that the women were trembling and bewildered, and they went away frightened. Dr. Esau McCauley writes about how immobilizing the mixture of hope and fear can be, and how in his experience the Black church has embodied this multiplicity. He says the women did not go to the tomb looking for hope. They were searching for a place to grieve. They wanted to be left alone to despair. The terrifying prospect of Easter, he says, is that God called these women to return to the same world that crucified Jesus with a very dangerous gift. They returned to that same world with a hope in the power of the divine, the unending reservoir of forgiveness and an abundance of love. To spread this message would make them seem like fools who would believe such a thing? Believing in rebirth in possibilities can indeed feel foolish. This is one of the messages of our Unitarian Universalist faith, that we can believe in the triumph of hope over hopelessness. We believe in green shoots in muddy fields, in the possibility of life in a death-filled world. And we believe we could embody these messages in our daily lives, not just in ancient stories. We believe we can regenerate ourselves even after long, hard winters. Finding my way, 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 finding my way back home. Finding my way, 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 finding my way back home. Finding my way, 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 finding my way back home. Finding my way, finding my way, finding my way, finding my way. Finding my way, finding my way back home. That refrain pulls me forward, finding our way back home, though it's not always easy. How do we find our way back to a feeling of home when we have moments of alienation from ourselves? By that, I mean when we feel disconnected from our still, small, guiding voice. That voice deep within us. Some might call that God. 
Some might call that S, capital S, self. Whatever it is, how do we find our way back to it, especially when it's been quiet? We return to Mary Magdalene and her ancient wisdom, and she instructs us to trust. To trust in what, we might ask? Mary says ourselves to trust in our own internal voices and compasses that can guide us back home, even when the path is unclear, even when we feel like fools. We hear this wisdom in the Gospel of Mary. There's some scholarly disagreement about when the Gospel of Mary was written. Some put it between 80 and 180 CE, about 50 years after the death of Jesus, probably around the same time as the Gospel of Matthew. Other scholars say it was written during Jesus's lifetime. Either way, it's one of the earlier recorded accounts. It is a non-canonical text, meaning it's not included in the Christian Bible. And for most of history, it was lost to us. It was unknown for 1,500 years until a Coptic translation of the text was discovered in 1896. Later, Greek translations of the codex were discovered. However, what we have is still incomplete. About 11 pages of the gospel have never been found. It is one of the only gospels, or it is the only gospel whose main figure is a woman and it uniquely celebrates humanity's inherent goodness. Her gospel is an account of becoming, of living into our full selves. In this gospel, Jesus teaches his followers to find humanity's goodness within themselves. When we feel a disconnection, he warns against it saying, this is why I told you. Become content at heart while also remaining discontent and disobedient. When the Blessed One had said these things, he greeted them all. Peace be with you, he said. Acquire my peace within yourselves. Be on your guard so that no one deceives you by saying, look over here, look over there. Instead, Jesus says, the child of true humanity exists within you. Follow it. Those who search for it will find it. This feminine text teaches us that there is goodness within ourselves, that each of us can recall, reconnect to that good humanity that dwells inside that that still, small voice is true and trustworthy. Do not let the voices of your better angels get drowned out by distractions, whether that's hubris or a scolding tone of a parent or an unrelenting critic from un some unknown source. There are many ways that each of us might feel unguided. Instead, Mary's wisdom tells us, listen closely to what is within. This type of realignment, this type of rebirth within ourselves, is often quite uncomfortable. Real, authentic growth often comes with that confounding mixture of hope and fear. For me, when I'm on the precipice of this regeneration, I'm often spiritually itchy. I feel anxious to leap to the conclusion, or better yet, I'm anxious for a roadmap. I ache for that tidiness, for that certitude. I yearn for this type of assurance when I'm facing transitions, when a move happens, when a job must be found, when a relationship begins or ends when I think ahead to a world returning to normalcy. 
In those moments of itchiness, I want so badly for the rivers to run directly to the sea. Instead, they often wind. Sometimes they split off. They curve around bogs and swamps. I am often looking over here, looking over there. And then I try to return to myself, to try to slow down enough so I might linger and listen. Trying to trust that even when the resolutions are slow to come, I have that guiding voice. We return to Parker Palmer who says, as my personal winters slowly turn to spring, I find it hard enough to keep slogging through. It's hard to slog through the mud within. I find it hard to be hopeful until that outcome is secure. But he says, spring teaches me to look more closely within myself and trust those green tendrils of possibility. To trust that intuitive hunch that may morph into a larger insight. The glance or touch that might start to thaw a frozen relationship. The stranger's act of kindness that makes the world seem like home again. London my way, London my way, London my way. And in my way, and in my way, and in my way back home. And in my way, 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 and in my way back home. And in my way, 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 and in my way back home. And in my way, 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 and in my way back home. And in my way, 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 and in my way back home. And in my way, and in my way, and in my way, and in my way, and in my way. Finding my way back home. Finding my way, finding my way, finding my way. I hear you, feel you call me. final thing I will share about the Gospel of Mary. This searching was not done in isolation. Mary was part of an ancient community that was tight-knit and interdependent on one another. She was not alone, and neither are we. We are each other's spiritual com companions as we strive to make that internal and inherent goodness real. As we embody rebirth in our individual stories, our families, our congregation, 
and in our hurting world. We have spiritual company. Thank goodness for that mutuality, for the ways we can push each other in the best possible ways. Those years after the death of Jesus were not easy for his followers. They had a radical message of love and inclusion that came right up against systems of terror and control enacted by the Roman Empire. Imagine a people living in that sort of fear and isolation, trying to encourage each other to keep at it, to dig deep within themselves and to trust. I imagine the early Jesus followers lost in a lagoon of grief, looking at one another and saying, remember the empty tomb, remember that life prevails over death, that the rivers will become known to us. Even as we carry our grief, even as fear clouds our way, we know that there is a message of memory and regeneration to spread. This is the redemptive message of Easter, that we can find our way back to ourselves, to one another, to that message of abiding love and the world that can be built from it. Hope moves. Hope moves. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Good morning, everybody, and happy Easter. And a thank you to our wonderful guest musician, Matt Meyer, today. In the spirit of spring, we embarked on a community project asking First Parish folks to write their hopes and dreams on pinwheels. Yesterday, we set them up on the Meeting House lawn. If you are local, we encourage you to check out this cheerful display in person. Here is a video sampling. Bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, day is breaking in my soul. I invite you to sing this along at home. Bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, day is breaking in my soul. Rise up from morning slumber, 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 day is breaking in my soul. Rise up and hear your calling, 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 day is breaking in my soul, bright morning star. Morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, day is breaking in my soul. Bright morning, bright morning star arising, bright morning star rising, bright morning star arising, day is breaking in my soul. Oh, lift your voice to heaven, here we go. Your voice to heaven, no oh, lift your voice to heaven, no oh, lift your voice to heaven. Day is breaking in my soul. Bright morning, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising. Day is breaking in my soul. We'll build this faith together. 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 Day is breaking in 
my soul. Bright morning star rising, bright morning star rising, bright morning star rising. There's a breaking in my Bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising. Day is breaking in my soul. Bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising, bright morning star arising. Breaking in my soul